Okay. Um, that is a prerequisite. Why I'm focusing on chimpanzee to know humans? Outgroup is the key word. And what is the outgroup? That is chimpanzees bonobos and gorilla and orangutan. But the nearest one is chimpanzees. So I have been studying chimpanzees. But the unique uh, approach that is to do both laboratory work and field work. So the place of study in Africa in the field and in Japan in the laboratory. And two different methods. In the field, people used to do the observation, field observation, using binoculars or direct watching. And the laboratory, you do the experiments. Experiments in the lab, everywhere. But in the two by two contingency table, you recognize there are two missing parts, two blank windows. So uh, I recognize, oh, there must be a unique approach in the field to do the field experiment. Or you may do the careful observation in the laboratory, what I call participant observation. So field experiment and participant observation. Uh, fair to say, uh, I don't say I'm the first person who invented field experiment or participant observation, no. Uh, participant observation is quite popular in developmental psychology and field experiment. I don't know who gets the owner of the field experiment, but uh, the pioneers like Adrian Coulthard, Jane Goodall, all those people did to some extent about field experiment. But I think I'm the first person who started systematic approach of field experiment. And now field experiment is getting more and more popular in the study of chimpanzees and the other non-human primates like capuchins. So two by two contingency table, field observation and field experiment, participant observation and uh, laboratory experiment. So I did all those approaches and synthesizing different approaches to know the chimpanzee as a whole. I really want to know the chimpanzee as a whole, not the broken pieces. I want to know every single details of chimpanzees to understand what is chimpanzee. Once I succeeded to understand what is chimpanzee, that inevitably resulted in my understanding of humans. Because I know the outgroup very well, so that it reflects my understanding of humans. So laboratory experiment, that is called AI project. So AI is this chimpanzee, name of uh, another female chimpanzee, uh, since April 1978. Um, I think next session, uh, I will talk about AI project in detail. I say my research partner. IE project is the tail end of ape language study that uh, has a long history, but the booming in 1960s and 70s. Uh, a lot of attempts, especially in the United States, American psychologists try to teach human language to the apes, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutan. And when we started IE project, 
uh, already three different approaches in chimpanzees. I will give you the details in the next session. Anyway, uh, this is the tail end of the uh, ape language study. So uh, initial constraints, well, I use the constraints a lot, but initial constraints of my work is I have to do something related to language. It's not my intention. I was a young assistant professor, and my boss, she asked me, it's free, completely up to you. You are free. Whatever you want, you may do. But your research must be somehow related to language because she got the research grant to talk about ape language. So the place is Primate Research Institute of Kyoto University in Inuyama. <clears throat> Maybe the conclusion first about this part too. <clears throat> As I have told you, told you, I want to know the chimpanzee as a whole. This means Chimpanzee is a living creature, uh, sorry, uh, a creature living in the group. You cannot single out an individual to say this is chimpanzee. No, 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 no. The chimpanzee is living in the group. As you do, you have your parents, your siblings, your playmates living together in the society. And that is you. The same story about chimpanzee. If you single out a chimpanzee from, isolated from the, the rest of the members of the community, you cannot say this is chimpanzee. Physically, it's chimpanzee. But socially, it's not. So uh, I'm really sensitive. When, when I see the chimpanzee, how do they live? Partly because I'm the field worker. I'm watching chimpanzees in the wild. So even in the captive situation, I really want to simulate the life in the wild. So this means what the first point is group living of multiple generation. And it took years. Uh, Primate Research Institute was founded in 1967, and a year later, 1968, a chimpanzee brought to the Primate Research Institute. I was a high school student in 1968, so it's a, before my arrival to the Primate Research Institute. There was a chimpanzee named Reiko. I will give you the details later. So anyway, I'm trying to build up the community of chimpanzee. And after the almost 50 years, five decades uh, effort, now Kupri, Kyoto University Primate Research Institute community is getting closer and closer to the natural community living in the brand new facility of outdoor compound connected to two huge cages, green cage and silver cage. Important point is this is only one in the world have this kind of quality. So three different habitats for one group. Look at the zoo. Here is the enclosure for lion. Here is the enclosure for monkeys. Here is the enclosure for gorillas. That's fine. Gorillas living in a group. Japanese monkeys uh, living in a troop. But in chimpanzee, definitely no. Chimpanzee community always divided into parties, fission fusion parties. 
So one community, but different places. So three different habitats are interconnected by the corridors or the doors. So we have 13 chimpanzee of three generations in a group in the Primate Research Institute. And uh, I want to show you the most recent attempt, what we call Skylab and walk-in booth in the captive situation to know the cognition of chimpanzee. So 50 meters high climbing fence connected to the silver cage. And from the chimpanzee viewpoint, the fourth floor, one, two, three, four entrance to the attached booth. Booth is tiny room to do the cognitive test. So it's free. Whenever you want, you may come to the booth to do the cognitive test. So once you do the right answer, you can get a tiny uh, reward, 8 millimeter cube of apple. And whenever you want, you may leave the booth. Then another chimpanzee come to the same booth to do the cognitive test. But of course, each individual has a different level of training, learning. So you have to identify who came to the booth to give the right problem to each specific chimpanzee. For that purpose, we use a video camera to identify the face, the automatic face recognition to know which chimpanzee is in the booth. And 300 uh, feeders, so automatically change to the next disc. <coughs> and it looks like uh, almost the factory to get to the data of uh, cognitive study. And in addition to the Primate Research Institute of Kyoto University, we have Kumamoto Sanctuary of Kyoto University. That is formal, formally belong to Wildlife Research Center of Kyoto University. It's a sister institute of the Primate Research Institute as founded in 2008. And Kumamoto Sanctuary was founded in 2011 and using drone flying video camera uh, I would like to show the Kumamoto sanctuary yep <laughs>
So 2013 and 14, very recently we succeeded to have six bonobos. No bonobos in Japan in the zoos, only in Kumamoto Sanctuary.